It's all about the coronavirus and how it is affecting the world of sports and it's affecting every part of our lives. And while the health effects are of most immediate concern, the long-term social and economic implications are also likely to be very significant. Now, the news about the development of the virus throughout the world is punctuated with references to the cancellation of major sporting events and uh, and for arrangements being made for or contests to be played behind closed doors. Sporting events are a common cause of people coming together in large groups, but also given the commercial and cultural value of many of these events. Now, what will be the legal implication of this pandemic? We'll be speaking with um, Steve Austin um, and in, in a couple of seconds, but looking at how the uh, it, whole thing is playing out. The coronavirus uh, affecting the world of sports. The English Premier League is shutting down. The German League is shutting down. Everything is shutting down. The players also, some of them have contracted um, this uh, virus. So it's not so good. And we're not even sure when the leagues will be back uh, in, in, our, in our screens, on, on our screens again. So there's a lot of implication in the world of sports concerning the coronavirus. Yeah, there is. And one of the aspects that you think of is players' wages. Sure. Because, you know, normally when the league is going on, wages are paid week in, week out. And now some teams actually have issues running those wages with the numbers that they mm -hmm. have. Because right now, football is not being played. They're not getting the weekly rights of um, of visuals as yeah. well. Now, take for example, now we have FCC on. They had issues paying the players' wages and running the club as it should be, oh. and actually give the players a wage cut, which some of the players do not agree to. Sure. So it's quite difficult. There are different aspects to look at it from. It's going to affect all the clubs in different ways. Oh. But I think the major thing is for most teams, most teams that are established, this is a trying and testing period for them to see how well they can actually sustain themselves oh. till the league is back on. All right, we have Steve Austin Wabwezi, Head of Sports Person and Grays LP with us. Uh, hello, Steve. Yes, good morning, Doka. Good morning. It's good to have you live on our show. Uh, same here. Yeah, let's talk about the legal implication of coronavirus on the world of sports. We know that all the leagues have shut down and we're looking forward to leagues coming up uh, on our screens again, but it's looking unlikely. But let's talk about the legal implication. Uh, the implications are very, very wide. Um, you have to talk about um, the implication on the employment relationship with the clubs. Uh, you, I'm sure you, I'm sure you witnessed what happened between Mikel and Charles Yeah. That is one of the many cases um, that can come up from this pandemic. A player is refusing to play uh, for the club as a result of this pandemic. The club is insisting that, okay, is either you play or you leave the club. So there are competing obligations. The player has an obligation to keep himself fit and play whenever he's called upon. There's also an obligation to obey lawful instruction of the club. So would you term the instruction of Transborn Sport as a lawful and reasonable one that every player of the club should comply with at every point in time? So these are some of the issues. Then um, you also talk about the issue of payment of salaries. Um, I, I do you remember that one of the Swiss clubs, I think FC Sion, terminated the contract of about seven players in their first team True. who refused to take a 25% pay cut. Now, the way this kind of issues work is you go into collective bargaining agreements with the players association so that is that's what i expect the premier league to do because right now uh, most of the clubs selling the clubs in the midlands the the ones languishing in relegation who don't really have the financial clout to continue to pay the salaries of these clubs they should as a matter of urgency have a sit down with the players' association to find the best way of getting around this so that none of the parties would be exposed to an unnecessary litigation in the end. Then you talk about the event sponsor. What are the implications? The title sponsor, the broadcast sponsor. Uh, these guys are paid a lot of money 
to have the Premier League on, on the TV. Now, the Premier League is not on TV. Again, I read an article the other day of Sportsman uh, saying that BT Sports and Sky Sports are threatening to file a suit against the Premier League. Now, uh, you look at the pandemic, and nobody could have reasonably foreseen it, all right? But then, uh, the agreement of the parties merely stipulates that this league must be on TV, come what may. Now, a number of solutions have been mooted, both in the, at the media and um, at the grapevine, that they, what they want to do is probably to have behind closed doors game and play somewhere in the Midlands that are not so much susceptible to the pandemic. Now, whether this eventually comes to fruition or not, the most important thing is that the broadcast sponsors will lose money. Now, it will again depend on the contractual relation between the parties, the, what they normally call the force major clause. The force major clause is simply a clause that the parties agree ahead of time that would excuse or suspend their performance of their contractual obligation. So this pandemic, I don't know whether uh, it was reflected in the broadcast agreement Agreed. and the various contractual relationships involving the Premier League and, the, and their sponsors. If it was reflected, then I think they can actually work something out. Not necessarily by performing, but seeing at the end of the day how each of the parties can count their losses. So because this clause must be expressly provided, they might not be able to take umbrage under that clause, except they agreed beforehand. Wow. Otherwise, we are going to have very long and fractious litigation going forward. So these are some of the issues. Then you also talk about the ticket holders. Exactly. The, the ticket holders who are even seizing ticket holders. What are you going to do about them? Are you going to refund their money? They're going to refund their money. Uh, that is also going to be part of the terms and conditions yeah. included in the ticket. Wow. So these are some of the issues that can arise that I'm hoping in the coming once we will have a clarity. Very true. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve, for talking to us this morning. Yeah, you're welcome. And stay, stay safe. I am, surely. All you right. Too.